Hi. Um, in this video I want to talk about the magnetic field of the bifila coil. The bifila coil has a magnetic field that flows from one point, from the center of the coil itself. And it wraps around the coil to the back, back to the center again. So the magnetic field is flowing around the coil to the back and back to the hole again. What well, what this does is actually make a what I call a, call a bipole or a stereo pole. And what what do I mean with that? Well, um, the north and the south pole, the traditional north and south, are located in the same space. So they're not separated like in a normal magnet. In, an, in a normal magnet we've got some distance between the poles. When this coil is in resonance it has a standing wave and it also has a static magnetic field and I think that's rather special because it's a high frequency pulse you, you need to produce the resonant frequency which I will explain in a other video, but um, the magnetic field I would expect to be alternating, but because it's a standing wave that is produced, the magnetic field actually is static, and that's rather special, I think. At the same time, the dielectric field is uh, still fluctuating, and uh, I will talk about the dielectric field also in the later videos. Now, if you look at the windings, the in-between space is where the dielectric field is. And so between the windings, it's, it's, it's really small distance where the dielectric field is capable to be stored or produced. And uh, the magnetic field flows over the windings to the back over the windings to the center so the, the, the path of the magnetic field is much bigger than the path of the dielectric field. Um, so that maybe explain why uh, there is a static ma magnetic field at resonant frequency and still a uh, dynamic dielectric field. The field is just emanating from the center and it's going outwards around the coil just like a toroid emanating from the center hope this will be obvious enough I can put the coil around 90 degrees and it is the same of course so the field is wrapped around the coil and it's emanating from the center of the coil and the north can be measured and the south can be measured but they emanate from the same space uh, so unlike a magnet where the poles are separated there in this coil uh, it's in the same place there is something funny about the magnetic part uh, the field that builds up, the magnetic field that builds up, is limited by the speed of light. Because it's spatial. The magnetic field builds up in space. It, it moves around the coil and this needs time. And this time it needs is defined by the speed of light. And at a certain point the magnetic field uh, is pulsed so fast that it builds up and it wants to collapse but then it's again pulsed so it can't collapse anymore and this is a perfect situation the magnetic field becomes static it doesn't build up it doesn't collapse anymore it just stays there where it is and you can see this I will show you this I, you can create a static magnetic field 
at the right conditions. And what are the right conditions? Well, that's the resonant frequency. And due to this fact that the magnetic field isn't collapsing anymore and isn't built up anymore but becomes static uh, means that the dielectric part isn't uh, uh, worked against. It, it becomes free of the magnetic field changes because the magnetic field influences the electric field, the, the electric power, the capacitance but the magnetic field is becoming stable and so the, the dielectric capacitance of the coil is uh, becoming uh, free of the restrictions of the magnetic field and this gives rise to a uh, resonant uh, capacity voltage in the coil and this uh, dielectric uh, voltage is so big that I was extremely surprised when I first saw it. Now I will put it into its resonant frequency. I've got the scope and I know the frequency because I worked with it before. I'm now at this is resonant frequency 630 kilohertz. I'll fine tweak it. Yeah, that's it, 632 kilohertz. And if you now look at the magnetic field, you can definitely see that at the hole it has a static magnetic field, at least. The compass is stable and it's pretty strong, the field. Uh, I say strong because the needle is uh, pointing to the center of the coil with stable uh, with a rather strong reaction let's say it like that so at the resonant frequency there is a uh, magnetic field uh, at least we can see it with the compass I will show you the scope which will show the resonant frequency of the coil. So, at resonant frequency the bifilar coil has a static magnetic field. So the, the magnetic field is wrapped around the coil from inside to outside and on the other side from the outside to the inside. At the same time, of course, the current is rotating. So, I guess it's safe to say that this magnetic field that goes around it also spirals. So we've got a vortex of magnetic fields on top and below of the uh, bifilar coil. And because the current here goes counterclockwise and on the other side when you look at it it goes clockwise these vortexes also move clockwise uh, counterclockwise and clockwise dependent on the way how you look at it but in the end of course there is only one direction so it's the same vortex. It depends on the way how you look at it. If you look from the top or, the, or the bottom. No. Um, the magnetic field of a single winding, just like this. If you make a winding like this, then it and you put a, a DC current through the loop, then this black is the loop, uh, you put DC on it, then the magnet field wraps around the coil in like a toroid. It's centered in the middle so it has the north and the south pole centered in the middle of the coil. So if you, if you cut a loop 
uh, you put a current through it, the center of the loop is the north and the south pole. Now what we usually do is extend the loops in the horizontal plane just like this. This is a solenoid and this is the most uh, commonly used coil. What this does is uh, make a separation between the north and the south pole. It's now not in the same the, uh, area anymore. It's actually separated. It's also inside the coil of course, but uh, I think we can say we've got now two points or uh, two poles, the south and the north, but not in the same place like uh, the single coil winding. The special thing with the bifilar coil is that uh, the bifilar coil is extended on the other axis of the single coil. So the single coil has the north and south in the same place and the bifilar coil extends this on the same plane. So instead of a, a vertical rise of windings we have now a horizontal rise of windings and this is uh, different because now the north and the south pole are still centered in the same space area in the center of the coil. There is no differentiation in space between the north and south pole because the coil is flat. It's very flat. If we compare this to a magnet this would be a flat magnet where the uh, the, the north and south pole are occupying the same space but also the block wall and the block wall is where all the magnetism is coming from because that's the dielectric center of the magnetic field and that's the fun part about this bifilar pancake coil because the windings have added capacitance due to the voltage difference between each winding. Uh, if you put 100 volts on it then there is a 50 volt voltage difference between each winding and that uh, adds to the uh, capacitance uh, of the coil and the capacitance is re related to the dielectric and the dielectric is uh, related to the block wall. So a stronger block wall than the usually uh, used solenoid because with the solenoid uh, the dielectric is also between the windings but now it's not aligned perfectly with the block wall because the block wall is here but the windings are hollow so it doesn't add up, it doesn't line up, so actually this is a little bit of a strange coil. Still it works and we use it a lot, but I prefer the pancake coil and I believe Tesla did too for the same reason as I just stated because it has the dielectric capacitance at the right uh, direction in one plane and together they form the best dielectric field. At least that is my opinion. I've got two bifilic Tesla coils here and they're one the same way and I put the back of the CDs together I line them up So now I've got the coils in series connected and I supply them with a DC power of 10 volts 2 amperes. Then there should 
uh, be a magnetic field around the coils, around both coils, uh, that should be attracted when they're like this. So this should be repulsion. And I'm putting the power on now. I've got 10.02 uh, volts and 1.94 amperes. So uh, that's 20 watts of energy and they should be repulsed. But I don't feel anything. Nothing at all. No repulsion. I'll put it in reverse so it should be attracting. It's getting a little bit warm now. So the energy is flowing in the coil. I do feel a slight Now I thought I felt a traction, but it isn't there. So, how strange. Have I got a compass? No. If I had a compass then I could show you the magnetic field because it is... Oh, here's my compass. Nice. So I've got a compass here, I'll uh, put one a little bit more away, put the, the coil on the side and you can see there is a very strong field and north is pointing out on the black side of this one and south, so the other coil the black side north is also pointing out. Yeah. So there is a strong field, but I don't feel it when they connect. So maybe I have to show you like this. Let's see what the magnet. They're, they're in repulsion, obvious, but why don't I feel it? I should feel some action when I put them together. There's almost no action. The coils are getting pretty hot now, so the current is flowing. As you can see they don't stay together so there is a repulsion going on but it's so 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 small. I would have expected it to be much much stronger. Yep, getting hotter and hotter. Now in the attraction will they stick together? Yes but also very, very weak. This is really strange. Of course, magnetic fields of these coils are supposed to be very strong. And you can see it with the, the compass that the needle is pretty strongly attracted. So it's not it's not a weak field, but the the pancake coils do not attract as they as you would expect it. So I think that's strange. Yeah. Why is that? <laughs> 